You looking for another Boatman pattern for your fly box? I've got one here I think you might want to add. It sure worked well for me. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel and to my fly tying bench. If you've been here before, thanks for dropping by once again. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I provide fly tying and fly fishing video content that I hope makes your next day on the water just that little bit more successful. Today I'm going to show you how to tie the Bearded Boatman, a simple water boatman pattern of mine that I love to tie on whenever fish are fixated on water boatmen early spring, late fall, when they go on their annual mating and migration flights. It's a simple fly to tie, so join me and let me show you how I put it all together. Let's tie a bearded boatman. So I'm going to tie this on a Daiichi 1530 number 12. I would tie these in 12s, 14s, and when they're on the really tiny ones, maybe a 16. For 12s and 14, I'm going to use a 332nd uh, silver tungsten or brass bead probably use tungsten most often. For the tying thread, we're using red thread, dot 70 denier, doesn't matter. Get that secured onto the shank and just put a nice base of thread all the way down. Bead wants to come along, we're going to push it back, go back up about halfway. I'm going to tie in the shell back, which is Rainy's Stretch Flex, and arguably one of my favorite colors, dark reddish brown, 1 8. I'm going to take a section of it out of the package, and I'm going to come in with my scissors, and I'm just going to trim it to an approximate point just to ease tie in. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So I'm going to tie in the Stretch Flex by the tip. That point we trimmed in it just aids tying and then once we're confident we've got it tied in place on top of the shank I'm just going to wind back and then start pulling on it to reduce bulk making sure it's nice and flat on top like so and then we're going to come forward for the body, we're going to use some Mirage Opal Tinsel, medium. Pull off a length, good three to four inches, so you got lots to work with. This imitates, adds some shine, which helps suggest the little air bubble that the natural boatmen trap along their bodies. Use like a little scuba tank to go down on their jaunts down to the bottom and back to the surface once it's exhausted so we're just going to start winding this close touching turns overlapping slightly even all the way down the shank to the base of the shell back there where that's tied in and then just come forward so by over wrapping we get a chance to fill in any gaps that we may have left and also adds durability to the to the material because we've overwrapped with itself. It's kind of hard for it to unravel. Sort of the equivalent of you trying to lift yourself sitting on a chair, if you will. That's the analogy I use. And then for the fly's namesake, we're going to build the beard. And that's using some UV ice dub, or ice dub UV calibatus, sorry, ice 50. And we're just going to take a little clump of this. And I'm just going to, not very much, just kind of pull it apart, put it back together, kind of restack it, if you will, twist on it a little bit. And we're just going to take this dubbing and double it around the tying thread, like so. And I've wrapped it around the thread, and I'm just going to then suck it up underneath. So it forms a little beard of dubbing. And then I'm just going to again secure that underneath. When you're stripping this fly through the water, the little two to three inch 
strip pause retrieve or maybe a brisk hand twist this is going to tuck and flow along the body we can come in at this point and give it a rough trim but just like that I'm just going to flow that back get that thread hold it pinch that along and then for the legs got to have those signature or like legs of imitate the natural boatman we're going to use some grizzly micro legs in root beer a great hairline dubbing product uh, dubbing product but um, you could use round rubber hackle you could use um, goose biots if you wanted and I'm going to slide it around the thread like so roll that over to the other side like that because I want these this set of legs if you will to tuck along the sides of this fly so I've got these legs in position on the side and then I'm just going to take the the strand pointing forward double it around and hold that in place and secure it with a couple of wraps Again, if you're having trouble with that just shorten your bobbin up a little bit gives you a little more accuracy and I'm actually pulling away from me not straight down and that's going to make sure that these are positioned properly because I want them to trail back like so happy with that just manipulate them around while you got the ability to do so and then I'm going to come in and trim that little loop and then trim away the excess by pulling up slightly and they're gone and then we're going to take our shellback material pull it over the top don't pull too tight wind that tuck that down like so a couple of wraps over the top I can fold it back a little bit now I've locked it in place and now I'm just going to come in pull up on this to reduce bulk nip it and almost nip and tear like so Play with those legs a little bit whoops so flexible they want to go wherever happy with that pull everything back out of the way give that bobbin counterclockwise spin when looking from the top that'll flatten those wraps out because we want to build up a little red this helps just boatmen have little red eyes so we're just putting a touch of red to trick the fish into into that we're happy with that i'm going to come in whip finish two to three turns like so directly behind the bead pull up trim we'll trim our legs so I just sort of gather them I'm not really pulling on them but I'm going to gather them and trim them just at the bend of the hook so they stick out like so short little legs now we're going to toughen the back up and to do this we're going to use some medium Solares resin and we're just going to put that on top a little drop kind of spread it out a little bit Let gravity sort of self-center that if you want to manipulate it a bit more you can come in with your dubbing needle kind of play around with it a little bit just like so That looks pretty good, I think. And then find your curing light. And zap it up. I'm not quite happy right where it is with the bead, so I'm just going to put a little bit more on. You could also use some of the bone dry as well, a little thinner. And just put another it's, it's far easier to use it's like painting you use a couple of coats instead of one big healthy heavy coat and then we're just going to pull this back and even everything up let that settle a bit we'll pull that down and we use that dubbing needle to distribute the the resin where we want and still a little bit more I'm going to put at the back it'll drop a 
And again, we'll pull that back and come in with our curing light and zap it up. That'll cure the resin and you have a beautiful little bearded boatman. So you've got that, that dubbing will help attract flash and tuck right along and yet you've got that flash sort of masked by the beard of that Mirage Opal Mylar. But a great little pattern to have in your box when boatmen are active during the fall and spring when they go on mating and migration flights or if you have a healthy population trout can eat one of these anytime it passes by. So be sure to put a few in your fly box.